This video is going to cover the basics of appointment schedulers in Active Demand. Active Demand is an outstanding appointment scheduling software package. An appointment scheduler is an object that manages an individual's appointment schedules. An appointment schedule has an associated available times, calendar, links to go to meeting, public facing, uh, client scheduling page, etc. People use appointment schedulers to set up appointments with sales people or uh, individual employees of an account or service appointments. There are many reasons to have an appointment scheduler with active demand. To find your appointment schedulers, they're under assets, appointments on the menu here. You'll be brought to this window which displays all of your appointment schedulers. To create a new appointment scheduler, click this button and it'll start you through the process of building an appointment scheduler. This is the appointment scheduler edit screen. Whether you're creating a new appointment scheduler or if you're editing an existing one, the window is the same. Just walking across it, there's the name of the appointment. You can associate a specific appointment scheduler with an employee of the account. So here there's a user called Active Demand. I'll just use this person here. Now walking across here, you can link an appointment scheduler to an external Google Calendar. The benefit of this is you can have appointments automatically created in the Google Calendar. As well, you can use the external calendar to control your availability times. So if you have bookings that aren't related to the appointment scheduler in your Google Calendar, it will block off time, available time rather, so that other folks do not book a time that is uh, conflicting with one of your existing appointments. You as well, if you check this checkbox, if you've authenticated with a, an external Google Calendar, any appointments made in the Google Calendar will automatically create appointments inside Active Demand, which will, of course, trigger the workflows that control the uh, the appoint the communication with the prospect, reminders, etc. Your availability time is a calendar, or I should say, a uh, widget that looks like this that allows you to set up which times in blocks you're available for appointments. Of course, the Google Calendar, if it's linked, will uh, of course put any appointments, uh, block off any appointments that uh, are inside this, this time range. The Availability tab allows you to control your availability in blocks of time. And it's quite easy to use. You basically drag and you drag blocks of time in the calendar to draw areas that you're available. And uh, as well, you can uh, uh, erase uh, existing times that you've set up by just drawing over top of the areas that are already defined. So the client facing registration page will only display time slots that are in this gray area here as available. And if you're linked to a Google Calendar, of course, any times that are blocked out on the Google Calendar will also be removed from available time slots on the client facing registration page. Now, as far as scheduling, you can control here how long your appointments are, whether it's a case you're giving some control to the uh, client or prospect who's trying to set up a schedule with you. This is all configured in this window. So if you only want uh, a meeting that is, let's say, one, one hour blocks, it's a case that you make the default appointment length one hour, you make the appointment length being no less than an hour and no more than an hour, and this will basically force the uh, appointments to all be of one hour length. If you allow some variability, again, the client facing registration page will display automatically options for your prospect. And if you have GoToMeeting linked, like I do, you can check this checkbox and it will automatically create a GoToMeeting uh, uh, object associated with each scheduled meeting. And of course, it'll fill out the details for the prospect. 
Now this gives you access to the client scheduling page. The client scheduling page is the public facing landing page that allows you to take in new appointments. You can edit the URL by clicking here and putting a specific person's name, uh, etc. Or you can go here and this will open up the page editor for the landing page that is associated with this appointment scheduler. Whenever you create an appointment scheduler, it automatically creates a landing page with a form set up for this specific appointment intake. You cannot delete the landing page. You can edit the landing page, but you cannot delete it. The only way to delete the landing page is by deleting this appointment scheduler. Then on the email communication side of things, there's a shared workflow that all appointment schedulers uh, uh, use for communicating with the prospects as well as the employee that is intaking or bringing in new appointments. So very briefly, it's a case that the appointment scheduler controls the intake, the communications, the availability, et cetera, for an individual appointment scheduler. An employee of your organization can have three different appointment schedulers, all some linked with Google Calendar, some not. Each salesperson can have their own appointment scheduler. There is no limit on the number of appointment schedulers that you create. Each appointment scheduler creates, like I said, a landing page for intake. It as well allows you to embed the appointment scheduling form element in any web form that is hosted on a WordPress site if you're using the WordPress plugin and short codes for the WordPress, uh, for the Word, WordPress forms for active demand. So I'm gonna take you to the scheduling page editor. So this is the scheduling page editor, which is it's just a standard landing page with a built-in form that is set up specifically with the appointment scheduler's web form element. And you can edit this page exactly the same way that you can edit any landing page in active demand. The big difference with this landing page versus any regular landing page is this, like I said before, this landing page cannot be deleted as it is tied directly to the appointment scheduler. So as you see here, this landing page, it's just got this custom form element that is got the embedded uh, appointment scheduler form widget and allows you to take in new appointments. So the prospect will fill out the form. And as you see here, only times that are available are either times in the block that I've designed in the appointment scheduler or ha uh, have open times with the linked Google Calendar. So once you fill in the form, of course, this is a standard form fill, which will kill an anonymity as any active demand form fill does. And the form elements, if you look in the form, again, just hover over the form element, edit the form, and you see here, the form element is, this is the specific appointment scheduler widget, and it is, this form element is tied directly to the appointment scheduler that I just configured. And uh, as you see here, we have the page breaks in this form, and you can design this form any way you want to build out to gain uh, specific survey fields, et cetera, for, uh, to help with uh, setting up the, the, the appointment for success. You can as well create an autoresponder, which is not required as you can actually control the entire communication for this appointment in the shared appointment scheduling workflow, which I'll go over in just a little bit. When this form is filled out, there is a system confirmation page that can be referenced using this dynamic field. The system landing page, of course, gives the details of the just configured appointment, as well as gives links to embed the specific appointment details in the client's calendar. You can, of course, override this. You can create your own uh, confirmation pages using the templates provided that are exactly the same as the one that uh, Active Demand provides, but again, will give you some opportunities to customize the page. So that was a quick overview of the client-facing appointment scheduling landing page and the form associated with the appointment scheduler that you're seeing here. 
Now I'm going to switch things over to talk about the communication between the prospect who filled out an appointment request and the employee who has an appointment scheduler. All of this is managed with a shared appointment processing workflow. So again, this workflow manages all communications for all appointments. Uh, you can, of course, uh, edit this workflow and customize the engagement with the prospect and, of course, the employees by clicking on this link. And I'll just click it now. This workflow looks quite complex at first glance, but it is actually quite simple. Any time an appointment is scheduled, this workflow is triggered. So an appointment is when an appointment is scheduled, it creates an appointment history item as well as a form fill history item. You have access to all of the elements of the form fill history item from within this workflow as well as having access to the appointment that triggered the workflow. So as you see here, there's two different types of appointments, one that has a GoToMeeting link and one that does not have a GoToMeeting link. So of course, the emails have to be different, one that's including the GoToMeeting links, the other one that doesn't. If you see here, these emails with the direction from left to right are going to the prospect who filled out the form. Emails from right to left with this arrow here are going to the appointment scheduler owner. And again, you can click on the emails, you can edit the emails and custom, customize the emails how you see fit. And there's a few reminders that are set up. Um, for example, uh, if it's a case that the, uh, if the schedule is more than a day away, we'll wait for the one day reminder, check to see if the email, if the appointment has been canceled. And if it's been canceled, we'll tell the owner of the calendar about the cancellation. If it's not, we're going to send one day reminders as well as we're going to send a, uh, a one hour reminder as well. So it's very easy for you to bring in other elements like, uh, for example, SMS messages or robocalls or any of this type of stuff or customize the emails inside this workflow. But again, I have to re-emphasize re that this workflow is shared by all appointments that are scheduled. So whenever an appointment is scheduled, no matter what the appointment scheduler is, this workflow will be triggered. And uh, so if you make changes to this workflow, it impacts all appointment schedulers. Now I'm going to talk about managing scheduled appointments. Like I said before, whenever somebody creates an appointment or schedules an appointment, it creates an appointment object which is managed by this workflow. The appointment object is embedded into the prospect's timeline and it as well will create an appointment in a linked Google Calendar as well it will create a GoToMeeting in GoToMeeting if it is uh, configured to do so. Now, when somebody fills out an appointment schedule, of course, it will communicate to the prospect. It'll give them the opportunity to add the details of this meeting to their calendar, etc. To view the current scheduled appointments, you can go to your dashboard. So there is a dashboard widget that shows all of the configured appointments for the account. Orange says that there is an appointment scheduled. If it's a case that it has been confirmed, it'll change color. If it's been canceled, again, the appointment will change color. And on the prospect's timeline, so if you imagine this prospect just filled out uh, an appointment schedule, of course, there is a form fill that happens. So this person fills out this form. But then if you see here, it actually creates an appointment object on the prospect's timeline. And of course, somebody can come in the, uh, and cancel the appointment from the timeline here and it will change the state of the appointment object. Or again, the prospect can cancel the appointment from their end by clicking the cancel button or on the confirmation or view appointment details landing page that's automatically created. So to summarize, when you create an appointment scheduler object, Active Demand automatically creates a landing page for intake of appointments. It also adds this appointment scheduler to the appointment scheduling form element. And as well, it allows you to manage the communication with the prospect using the shared 
appointment processing workflow, which either can be accessed directly from the appointment scheduler, or it can be accessed here by clicking on the lead processing uh, link here, which of course shows all lead processing workflows. And as well, you can manage the uh, appointments from within the prospect's timeline, or you can view the different uh, appointments that are scheduled using the calendar widgets. So this concludes the video on getting started with appointment scheduling in active demand.